All right. Hey, this is Bishop Jackson on Infinity Extra, where we do extraordinary things. I, I'm not sure about extra, but anyway, extraordinary things on Infinity Extra. Hey, we're in the month of February. February. It is the Barry White month. It is the month of love. And so together we're just looking at, um, um, we, we, I mean, we're rolling through church and we're speaking about uh, um, the healthy place. But we're also speaking about love in the healthy place. And we and we place that in the center of that, talking about marriage. So today we're talking about black love and love and love and love. Black love, white love, Asian love, whichever love you have. We're talking about that biblical love. We're talking about framing our love on the basis of being healthy in it. So I wanted to um, share that with you today. I've got a, a few books that I've, I've reflected on whilst I was doing this study and reflecting on it as we're going into this uh, month. We thought, hey, I hope that February has been good for you. I hope that you are able to sit down with your wife or your fiance and prepare yourselves for the future and to build up a, a, a thriving relationship. And so that's the, the important thing that we wanted to talk about. So um, I wanted to reflect upon the, the, the kind of the core, you know, I always go to the core theological base. So I try and have a biblical base to everything. So I was reading uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and then also chapter 7, uh, Apostle Paul giving some encouragement about one guidance in sexual relationships and also guidance in also marriage relationships the apostle paul challenging the uh, corinthian church but uh, the bible says in genesis 1 genesis 1 so we can turn to genesis 1 and god said let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the face of the earth and god created the man in his own image in the image of god created him um, male and female he created them and god blessed them and said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing so there's the creation of man at the pinnacle of of, of, of everything that god does he's at the right at the tippy top so um in our two episodes we're going to speak about love we're going to speak about how it affects us in our our community culturally i have to reflect upon the blackness of it the culturalness of it the africanness of love the caribbeanness of love and, and just examine it uh, from the challenging perspective that we come from and so also uh, genesis chapter 2 and verse 20 to 25 we're going to just grab some more from the new testament um, a little bit after this as well and said uh, adam gave names to all the cattle and all the fowl of the air and over every beast of the field and then uh, uh, there was no help meet for him and the lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed uh, up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord had taken from man, he made woman and brought uh, her to man. And Adam said, now this is uh, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. And where he called uh, her woman, because he had taken her out of man. Therefore shall a man uh, leave his father and his mother and to cleave his wife and they shall be one flesh and they were both naked and man and wife were not ashamed so it's really good to get back to the the original text you know i talk about this model of the triunity of this model when i talk about uh, 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 this uh, reflection of when god made when god created so the triunity of this model is you leave you cleave and you weave um, I shared it in a sermon and I, I think um, if you were not present, you should have been present on the Rock uh, YouTube live. So you can check that out also. Um, we had our round table, our red, a red table talk. The tables were square, so they weren't round. So we had that. We were conversating about marriage and we were talked about to leave, to cleave and to weave. And I think that we blessed a lot of people when we were sharing that so um we also reflected on a couple of books as well We've, we we shared on a couple of three or four books that i wanted to make sure that you got hold of as well um one of them was uh miles monroe the power and purpose of love and marriage i just love that book um i keep reading and rereading it i just love it um the rest in peace uh, uh blessed miles monroe great apostle and 
and, and a great challenger of thinking. And so he wrote this book called The Power and Purpose of Love and Marriage. And so I wanted to recommend that one to you. I also wanted to recommend models uh, that help you work through your relationship as well. So one of them is The Five Languages of Love by Gary Chapman. That's reasonable. I don't think men love it much, but women love it. So that helps you understand your language of love. Also, uh, The Marriage Book by Nikki and Scylla Lee. I like that book. It's an old book now, but it's a, it, it has a context of being able to frame your marriage, frame how you go forward and frame your relationship as well. You know, in a, in a day and time like this, marriages mean much to people. They mean much to me and you. And um, uh, as we look in our culture, it is always a challenge to look at how marriage works. You know, in the seniors, I suppose the senior members of our community are the older folk. They were always ones that had long marriages. And um, I'm not sure whether they loved each other for the whole time, but I think they were able to kind of drive through and to um, and to push through the challenges and keep the love alive and so that fascinates me as well as to how they did that um, so uh, that's interesting to me as well it's also interesting to me that um, in, 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 in years gone by you would never see a black couple on our televisions you you would hardly see a black couple on the adverts and now, strangely enough, you see a lot of black couples, but you also see a proliferation of black and white couples. You see black men with white women, white women with black men. You see Asian men with white women and so on and so forth. There's a lot of a mix. There's not much of a huge representation of a black family that kick back that uh, the community had or the kickback from white society when uh, one of the major uh, grocers or the major retailers decided to put a whole black family on an advert was wow that doesn't represent us so that was strange to me that we're getting all these images and still there's no um, actual reflection upon uh, the beauty of black love or a love between a black man and a black woman so I've got to reflect on that because I am a black man as you didn't know and if you didn't know check out my picture yes I'm black and my wife is too so uh, I'm not telling anybody else uh, that that's uh, uh, that's the, the the thing that you do but what I'm saying is it should be fine it should be okay that if you can marry uh, and feel at peace in any other community marrying your own uh, peoples you're marrying your own ethnicity then it's fine with us too black love is fine it is nothing wrong with it. There's nothing unsacred about it. It's beautiful. And so some of the context that we find each time is that there is this push for black men, push for black women to feel more comfortable marrying outwards than inwards of their community. The balance is that they have both and the balance is that we always have had both. But I think that the key thing that we need to remember is that if you are marrying out of your community because you have no respect for your community, then you're wrong. If you are marrying a white woman instead of a black woman because you have no respect for a black woman, then you're gone mad. You've lost your own mind. And vice versa, if you're a black woman and you have no respect for a black man and you're going to marry somebody who's white or Asian because you do not like black men, then you have lost your natural mind. So we need to get back to understanding this. Sometimes the context of our relationships, which are sometimes minuscule in comparison to the whole uh, game of uh, our community, then picture, they, they, they paint or they embruge our understanding of love in our community. And I think that if you're going to get married to anybody, uh, you must still respect your culture still respect your community still also never not respect the black women and the black men that you come from so that's our challenge also also a challenge that i i, I am uh, picking bones with as we get into this as we talk about the strength of marriage is to look at what marriage as a blessing marriage as a blessing some of the things i thought about is the big question that is marriage then uh, 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 null and void in our community do we need marriage anymore in the community in the black community do we need marriage anymore we know that marriage is is, is was part of the structure when i talk about uh, dr king i reflected on his commitment to coretta scott king but also the challenges that they had within whether dr king was 
uh, faithful in his vows in his marriage? That is a big question mark. That's a big challenge. However, Coretta Scott King was absolutely faithful in her task. Uh, um, they didn't. They didn't. Well, they didn't have time to divorce by the time he was killed. Um, so uh, we looked at the, the, the ch we can look at the challenges of when stress gets to marriage, it can break people down. And so Dr. King lived in the pressure of death. And so um, within the context of that pressure of death, um, he dropped the baton. We know this, uh, it is documented. Unfortunately, the FBI did record. Um, he denied it, but there is evidence of that. Now that doesn't make Dr. King not great. It just makes him human. Uh, but then the next thing we look at also is uh, sure. our dear Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey went through two, I, 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 if I remember rightly, he went through two marriages, but always respected black women. And so we, we're going to dig into that a little later on. One of the things that I'd like to reflect on is making sure that we understand. Uh, I believe that, that the heart of a strong marriage or strong relationship is strong friendship. Is strong friendship and from the marriage book I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some golden rules some golden rules so some golden rules of marriage the other thing that I want to look look on as well this is this might be long this month so we need to talk about this is the over sexualization of our young boys and girls uh, unfortunately I believe that the, uh, the in the community that we are in there is too much over sexualization of our children our children are brought into the sexual realm of relationship too early far too early without even understanding the psychology or the philosophy or the respectfulness of their bodies that before they understand their bodies they are preparing for sex and so we need to challenge that as a community and you look very carefully when we look at the music genre that is around our children that is being spouted out by even uh, uh, radio one extra um, towards our children it is a highly explicit half of the material that you see there it is highly explicit it is over sexualization of our children and I think it's an abomination to us uh, because whether you are Christians, yes or no, our children should not be reflecting on the first thing of relationships being sex. They should start thinking about the maturity of how their de bodies develop. This is our, the first challenge. You and I know that it was a destruction of our lives when we began to be sexual before we were mature. Sex is not for boys and girls. Sex is for adults. Sex is for mature people who understand their bodies, who understand what their bodies function like. Once you are immature in a sexual relationship, you then abuse and you don't even know you're abusing. That is the challenge. You abuse and you don't even know you're abusing. So the first thing we need to look at and teach our youngsters is that friendship is the biggest basis of how you build a relationship. Um, so many times our youngsters are told that you got to look like this and you got to look like this. We are forcing the image. I looked at an image the other day of, of, of two images. There was one of a white girl, one of a black girl. The black girl, her chest was low and her shorts were high and her skin was creamed. It looked like a, it looked like a slave selling. Okay, now she was pitted against a white girl. The white girl was covered up. She had a jacket on, she had a blouse on. None of her chest was showing. None of her, uh, 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 her, her claws were tight. And she, they were very young, the two of them. And uh, the image was said, both are beautiful. But when you looked at the image, I would love to find that image to show you it. The black girl was sexualized and the white girl was beautified. And this is the problem that we're getting. This is the problem that we're getting, that our girls and our boys are being sexualized way before time. And I think that we need to drag that back. They are not fodder for people. Where History Pass tells us that on the, on, 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 on the islands of Jamaica uh, and the Caribbean and St. Kitts and everywhere you go across the islands, there were this book breaking idea that when the slaves came in, sex was used to break their will. Uh, there were some farms that were there or some plantations that were there were uh, um, uh, book breaking farms or you call them sexual abuse farms and they would destroy people's will by using sex against them 
remember that some groups that we have in uh, the Caribbean are um, higher colored skin because the slave master or the bookie master would have sex with any female slave that he chose. And also the male slaves would be used as, uh, if you like, they would be used as, as almost like bulls to be able to create other slaves. They were used uh, for b- 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 pre-creation or procreation, should I say. I'm, I'm not getting my words out today. They were used as bucks. So all they were used for on the different farms, they were sold to each farm to impregnate the slave women. They were not allowed to marry. They, their marriages, if they married, they were killed or they were sold. So marriage was uh, uh, um, something that was da- a danger to your life and to your family. So we have got this in the background, but then look further than the background. We have an ancient tradition of marriage, ancient tradition of marriage, that even when it was a risk of life, we were determined to be married. So marriage is part of the DNA of African people. So this is my first part. And then my second part, I'm going to be sharing about this golden rules of marriage. I, I shared it on another time. So this is my first part. So we're going to um, chop this first part and uh, just thank you for joining in with us today and have some thoughts, send some messages in sure. so you we know that you're with us. This is Affinity Extra. Thank you for listening to us. And please remember to link us on Spotify. And when we do come on YouTube, please uh, click subscribe and share and let somebody know that we're doing this thing for real. God bless you. This is Bishop Jackson doing rock solid on Affinity Extra.